As for the basic properties of magnets, you need to know light poles attract, I mean, light poles repel, opposites attract, uh, know the north and south of the magnetic and geographic poles, know about these substorms and how the magnetic field of the earth protects us from those charged, uh, from the charged particles from the solar storm. But really, you're just going to see a few questions about those on the next test. Um, any questions so far about what we've done? Oh, you need to know about magnetic domains and how that contributes to our magnetic field of uh, both magnetic and non-magnetic objects. All right, well, let's get more to the meat of this chapter. We're going to look at magnetic forces. This is important because, well, it's important for a couple of reasons. It helps us to describe how we generate electricity and uh, We'll talk about magnetic forces, how charges interact with magnetic fields, and we use those to generate an electrical current. Um, and then also, I think it just helps us to think in three dimensions. So students often don't think very well in three dimensions. And so I think this has an extra thing of just allowing us to think of things in both the, in all three coordinates, the x, y, and the z coordinates. I'll show you what I mean in just a bit. But in short, a charge moving through a magnetic field experiences a force. And the magnitude of the force is given by this. It's given by uh, Q, V, B, sine of theta. Q is the charge. It's in uh, coulombs, the SI unit of coulombs. V is the speed. It's given in meters per second. And B is the magnetic field. That's given in the unit of Tesla. Uh, and then theta is the angle between B and V. So B and V are actually vector quantities. And so theta is going to be the angle between those two. It'll always be the angle that I give. Is you're not going to be taking 90 minus whatever. So whatever angle is given for a particle that's traveling through a magnetic field will be the angle between B and V, the one that you choose. So taking the product of those, this actually comes about, don't write this down, but if you've had Calc 3 per chance, I know most of you don't do Calc 3, but this comes out from what we call the cross product, QV cross B. But don't write that down because... Uh, you've probably never seen the cross product, and you're not going to see it again with me either, because we don't do that. But if you've had count three, either in high school or here, you've probably seen it. The SI unit for the magnetic field is the Tesla. Uh, we capitalize it when we abbreviate it. It's uh, capital T because it's named after a person, after Nikolai Tesla. Right, they made that movie. You see that movie? The Prestige, or what was the movie? There might have been multiple movies. He's a fairly eccentric person. Uh, sometimes we express the magnetic field in Gauss. You might have heard it expressed in Gauss. Uh, one Tesla is equal to 10 to the fourth Gauss. It's also capitalized because it's a person. I'm not going to use Gauss. I'll use the SI unit. For those of you going on for the MCAT or whatever, as you're preparing, you might see Gauss for magnetic field. And it's, you have this conversion factor between Gauss and Tesla. You use the right-hand rule. Listen, you're going to see the right-hand rule a lot in this chapter. And you're going to think it's kind of goofy at first. But it's actually fairly useful because it helps you think about things in three dimensions. And I think that's the big takeaway with this, is just helping us to imagine things in our head that act in three different dimensions. So we'll use the right hand rule to determine the direction of the force. First of all, you have to use your right hand. You can't use your left hand. And also, if you go looking around on the internet at the right hand rule, be careful because sometimes people use a left hand rule and they have different variations of the right hand rule. So those will work, but they'll be different perhaps from the one that I'm showing you. So just be careful if you go looking on the internet for various things. You let your fingers of your right hand of your right hand, uh, point in the direction of the velocity vector. Then you fold your fingers
toward the magnetic field vector. And uh, your thumb gives the direction of the force. An alternate way, and I'll show you both, I'm going to do it in red here, is you let your index finger go in the direction of the velocity vector. You let your, uh, the middle, it's the middle finger, a middle finger, go in the direction of the magnetic field vector, and then your thumb still gives the force gives the direction of the force. Right, we'll do a bunch of examples. I'll show you. You'll get to practice in class today how to use this right-hand rule. We're actually going to see three applications of the right-hand rule. And later, after we see them, I'll write them all down so that you'll see, see them all together. The first two are basically the same, and then the third is quite a bit different. This assumes the charge is positive. If the charge is negative, then you take the opposite direction given by the right-hand rule. So if you encounter a problem, as you will, where it has a negative particle, say an electron or a negative ion, then you just follow the right-hand rule, treat it like a positive particle, but whatever direction you get, you take the exact opposite. So if you get positive Z, you take negative Z. If you get positive X, you get negative X. Right? Just take 180 degrees from that direction. We're going to use some symbols. I think I might have represented these last year, but we'll use the symbols for plus and minus z. So if I look at my coordinate system, this is plus x, this is plus y, this is plus z. Uh, we'll use the symbol to be plus z right here, and the symbol to be minus z, which is in this direction, to be this symbol. The minus Z is supposed to look like an arrow going away from you. The fletching, the feathers on the arrow as you go away from you are supposed to look like this. And then if you have an arrow coming at you, you had that before? Have you? No. If an arrow was coming at you, I guess it would look like this because you would just see the tip of the arrow. That's what those are supposed to look like. And we'll use those symbols. Those are fairly standard to use. Let's try these together. I'll do this first one and then I'll let you try the the second and the third one. So remember I said there are two different ways. I let my fingers go in the direction of V, like this, and then I have to let them fold towards the magnetic field. But in order to do that, I have to rotate my hand around like this so that they fold towards the magnetic field. Notice I'm using my right hand. Fingers in the direction of V fold towards the magnetic field. And so my thumb gives the direction of the force that it feels. Or alternatively, I can take my index finger in the direction of V, my middle finger in the direction of V, F, and then my thumb gives the direction of the magnetic force. Y'all right, try these others. On the first one, your magnetic force is going to be out of the page. So it will look like, I would represent it like this. And by the way, you know that, or I didn't say this, but you should know that the velocity, force, and magnetic field vectors are orthogonal. You know what that means? It means they're all 90 degrees to one another. Actually, it's the force vector is orthogonal to both V and V. But in these cases, they're all orthogonal to one another. They're all 90 degrees. So here, V is in the Y direction, V is in the X direction. So I know that F has to be either plus or minus Z. So here, for example, I have to be either what? Plus or minus X, Y, or Z. Which two coordinates are already taken up? Y and Z are already taken up. This is negative Y. This is negative Z. So this one's either going to be plus or minus X. This one's either going to be also plus or minus X. We'll do that as a quicker question, but go ahead and decide what your answer is. Is this one A plus X or B minus X? So is the force 
in the positive x direction or is it in the negative x direction for that middle example? sort of okay, about 20 of you have the wrong answer. So, fingers in the direction of B, they need to point towards B, does it go like this or like this, and figure out, and then is the force, your thumb, in the plus or minus X direction. I'll stop at uh, 125, so just guess if you're not sure. 125, about two more seconds. Okay, so let's see. Fingers in the direction of B. B is into the page, so that's be like this, because it folds into B. It goes in the positive x direction, so A is the correct answer there. Let's try this next one. Listen, don't try to memorize these, because like to memorize all the various iterations, because there's a lot of different iterations. You just need to learn the right-hand rule and how to apply it. So here, V is out of stage and V is down. Start with V, fold towards B, and then what direction does your thumb go? Is it A, positive X, or B, negative X? V is out of the page, B is down. <laughs> Use your right hand, okay? Yeah, I know. It's a lot of fun to watch y'all. Like, it's generally fun to watch y'all anyway, because you sort of go through all these facial expressions when you're... Yeah. All right. Feel free to ask your neighbor. So about 10 of you have the wrong answer. All right, I'm going to stop at 118. 118. Just a few more seconds. Okay, good. Yeah, so here, you put your fingers in the direction of V. And then, I don't know, should it be like this or like this, but my magnetic field, I want to come out of my palm to fold towards my palm, or my fingers fold towards the magnetic field, so that tells me that it's to your right, to the right, which is in the positive x direction. Remember, positive y is up, negative y is down, positive x is right, negative x is right. And then we're going to do a bunch more of these. It comes up in a lot of different things, so that's just a first flavor of it. Okay, you can also work backwards to find these, the force, the velocity, are given. We need to find the magnetic field. Here, you start with V in this direction. My thumb has to point in the direction of the force, which happens to be out of the page, but it could be either way like this, but it's out of the page. And so the magnetic field has to come out of my palm to give me that force. So my magnetic field is in the negative X direction. Try these other two on your own. But this one, the magnetic field is in that direction. Notice I had to switch around how I did that. My thumb is the force, my palm is my magnetic field, and my fingers are the velocity vector. So we'll do A. Oh, wait, now it's not going to be positive X, negative X. What's it going to be for this second one? Y. It's going to be positive Y or negative Y, because F is in X direction, V is in Z direction. So is it positive or negative Y? Thank <laughs> you. 
Stop in a few seconds. I stop at 150. 150. Looks like y'all are getting the hang of this. Okay, good. Uh, v is right. Let me show you. V is into the page. F is to the left. So my magnetic field points down. It points out of your phone. Now, V into the page. If my force is in that direction, the magnetic field would be up. R, what if it was a negative particle? What would it be? It would just be the opposite. Yeah. All right, so let's try this last one. Either A or B. Oh, yeah, uh, no. Uh, now it's plus or minus x. Thank you. Stop at one minute. One minute? About ten of you have it wrong. Ten or twelve of you. Okay, so here F is down. B is out of the page. That means I need to rotate around like this so that B comes out of my palm. And that means my velocity vector is going to be to the right, which is or, uh, which is positive x, right? Yeah. So my velocity vector here. Okay, folks. Let's try this one. Um, this is the idea behind a mass. This is the idea behind a mass spectrometer. That, and we'll actually look at mass spectrometers later. But you put a charged particle into a magnetic field, and you measure the radius of its path. That's what your, your mass spectrometer does. We'll see how that works later. But uh, So this is a mock-up of a mass spectrometer. I have a magnetic field. I accelerate that charged particle, usually with an electric field, to a certain speed, and then I let it go through the magnetic field and I measure the radius of its path. But in this case, I'm just asking, uh, the negative charge enters the magnetic field, in what direction will it feel a force when it first enters that magnetic field? Excuse me, please note that it is a negative charge. So don't forget what you're supposed to do with negative charges. Okay, we're sort of spread out on these answers. This is exactly the same as what we had before. If we were to write it a little bit differently, I would have my charge here. It would have a velocity in this direction and a magnetic field in this direction, but it would be a negative charge. I've just drawn it a little bit differently, but a similar setup as to this. Magnetic field out of the page, velocity vector up, and remember, it's a negative particle, so you don't need to switch your answer around. Ask your neighbor if you like. I'm going to stop at 140. 140?
All right, so a few more seconds. Okay, good. V is right. Um, my velocity vector is up. Back at ideal and then to the page, so I get to the left. Oh, wait, no, it's not V. Did we put V? Oh, no, it's not into the page. It's out of the page. Right. So uh, we velocity vector up, magnetic field out of the page, so we get to the right. But it's a negative particle, so it's not to the right, it's to the left. V. So the. This particle, when it goes into this magnetic field, will follow a path that looks like this. It'll be pulled to the left by that magnetic field. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How to draw this? Well, I know my magnetic field is out of the phase. That's what these dots represent. They just represent that in this region, the magnetic field is all out of the phase. Oh, they be Right, there will be X's if it was into the phase. Is that why y'all are confused? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And they're scared? That's right. why I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, so the dot represents the magnetic field that's out of the phase. The velocity is in the same direction there. V, the magnetic field is out of my palm. And so the force is to the right, if it were a positive particle, but it's a negative particle, so it's to the left. Oh, okay, there's more of these. Okay. Let's try this one. I have a joke for y'all, if you'll get this one. <laughs> and a life All right, many of you have the right answer. A few of you do not. All right, let's stop at 135, 135. All right, so this particle is traveling in this direction with a magnetic field that's down. And so my force is, if I'm moving, if I'm this particle, I'm going to move like this. I'm going to move into the page because my force is into the page. So C is the right answer on this one. Don't worry, we'll get the hang of it. We have some more of these in our concept test. Let's do this calculation here. Remember the equation I gave you for the force, that QBD sine theta. If the angle is not given, you just assume that it's 90 degrees, that it's orthogonal.
All right. We'll stop in about 10 seconds. Say 145. I got promoted. Does anybody care? Yeah. It's a little raise. But it's actually not that bad of a raise. But I'm no longer an associate. But my wife is still an assistant. And so sometimes, like, our parents, they think, oh, is she your assistant? I'm like, no, she's not my That's not how it works. <laughs> it's just she came on later because we had not only really kids and stuff. Um, let's see, we'll stop at 218. 218. I don't think you're going to get a joke on this one. Sorry. Oh, no. I guess you do. All right. So, um, so at some moment, an electron moves with a velocity of one meter per second. I want to know the force. F is QVB. Sine of theta. As I said, if the angle's not given, you just assume that it's 90 degrees. And the sine of 90, you know, is 1. So I'm just looking at QVB. Uh, Q is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. It's actually negative, but I'm just looking for the magnitude of the force. And I know that because it's an electron. It's our fundamental unit of charge. Uh, times V, which is 1 meter per second, times uh, our magnetic field. And so my force then is D. All right. I knew this guy who was addicted to grapefruit. He said he could stop anytime. <laughs> Isn't that bad? But seriously, like I didn't know a guy that was like my uncle, my great uncle, David Clark, he's just half. Like he was addicted to alcohol. And he would drink stuff like that. Just because I don't know, it's just I don't know, it couldn't help us. Like, this isn't a joke, I'm serious. And so like I know that and sometimes you guys, even though many of you are underage, but you drink a lot. Right? Am I right about that? It's fairly common around here, but it can be very dangerous to you. And so I just want to, to ask that you sort of think about things that you do and think about, you know, that, that you could find yourself in a place where you you can't really help yourself, that you want to go out and drink break with it or clean with it or whatever else that just sort of gives you this high that you can't get away from. All right? I know that's kind of downer, but... But it was a joke, too. <laughs> yeah. But you can tell your friends the joke, and then you can pass on this important life lesson that, you know, those things, they start now while you're in college and making decisions about your life. Okay, let's look at a magnetic force on a current-carrying conductor. Um, this is going to be exactly the same as a force, a charge in free space. That if I have a charge in free space moving through a magnetic field, it feels a force. Similarly, if I have a charge moving in a wire through a magnetic field, that charge is also going to feel a force. So I can imagine, you know, I have this charge moving with a certain velocity through a magnetic field. It's going to feel a force that is in this direction, and so it's going to move up like that. In a similar way, if I have a wire, this is my wire, and I have a charge moving through the wire with a certain speed, we can think current, right? Because that describes how those charges move through that wire. Then it will also feel a force when it enters into this magnetic field. And that will be very important. That was discovered back in the late 1800s by Michael Faraday. But it will be extremely important to how we live today because this idea the discovery that a current carrying conductor can feel a magnetic force in it when it's in a magnetic field is pivotal. <laughs> it's pivotal to creating our uh, generators and the ability to generate electricity. Now the magnitude of the force is um, ILB sine theta. And you can think about this. It's really the same form as what we had before. Q, V, B, sine theta. Look at the units. These are coulombs, meters per second, tesla. 
Notice that we have the same units here. They're just a little bit different. They're sort of situated around a little bit differently. We have coulombs per second, meters, tesla. And so notice these units for this force are the same as what's over here. In fact, these expressions are the same, except now our charges aren't allowed to uh, go just anywhere that they're constrained to this wire. But we still think about it in the same way. Uh, actually, when we think about the vectors, this is kind of a uh, nitpicky idea, but our current is a scalar quantity, so our L, we'll talk about the direction of the wire, not the direction of the current. But if you want to, the current is in the same direction as the wire, so all of these sort of interchange those. Do you understand what I'm saying? Current is a scalar quantity, so it doesn't have a direction, but L is a vector quantity, so it does have a direction. And so when we talk about the direction of our current, we're really talking about the direction of L. But they're the same, so it doesn't matter. All right. Um, so the force arises because these particles, they feel a, these par particles in the wire feel a force. So for example here, this positive particle, when we talk about current, we think of the flow of positive particles because of Benji back in the 1700s. Um, it will feel a force, what? that's up. And so as a result, the wire will feel a force that's up. A, a visibly seen, felt force will be felt on the wire because of this current that travels through a magnetic field. The next time I'll bring a generator, we can actually, you know, play around with it. Let's try these. Same as we had before, except now where we had V before, we're going to have I. So we let our fingers go in the direction of I, or L as it may be. We want our magnetic field to come out of our palm. And so this one, this wire, will feel a force into the page. So the force on this one is into the page. What about this one? Is it A or B? First of all, is it going to be X, Y, or Z for this one? plus or minus x, right. And I know that because v is in the z direction, i is in the y direction, and it's our, they're both negative z, negative y, and so the force has to be either in the plus or minus x direction. Yeah, v is the x is into the page. These represent the magnetic field in this region. You're awesome. All right, let's stop at uh, 53, 55, we'll stop. Okay, good. A is right. Um, fingers in the direction of I. Magnetic field is into the page, so it goes in this direction, which is to the, to the right. Was it to A? Did that work A? Okay? Yeah, let's try this last one. This one, likewise, is going to be plus or minus X. Stop at uh, 43, say, 43. Let's figure getting the hang of this. But if you're having trouble, you can come see me. I can work some sample problems with you. Okay, A is right. Um, I in that direction. B is out of the page. So I can flip my hand around and now it goes to the right. Think it's right hand roll business? Yeah. 
This is the second application of the right hand rule. It's basically identical to the first, except your charges are running along a wire. We'll see a third application uh, later in the week. Right, let's try this. You push a one meter long piece of copper wire through a magnetic field. That's the magnitude of the magnetic field, and that's the force that I push on with it. I push on it with uh, what current is created in the wire. Let's stop at 135, 135. Awesome. Almost everybody has it right. Very good. A is right. So we're starting to move into the idea of generating electricity. And I find that if I apply a force to a wire in a magnetic field, then it will create a current within that wire. And so I have a force of 12 newtons. F is equal to ILB. The current, well, the current is what I want to know. L is 1 meter. And the magnetic field is 2.4 tesla. So that gives me an I of 12 over 2.4. What is that equal to? 5? Yeah, 5 amps. Awesome. So that's our current. That's the basic idea behind a generator. If you apply a force to a wire in a magnetic field, you will generate a current in that wire. Y'all ever hear any jokes about sausage? They're the worst. Did I use that one already? Oh, man. Okay. Now, this isn't very funny, I'll just... Um, how does Moses make tea? Oh, come on, punchline. He brews it. He brews it. Moses, he brew, yeah. He brews it. Uh, okay, so let's look at torque on a current loop. Or, um, no, that was such a bad joke. We'll just stop here. <laughs> I'll see you on Wednesday, I guess. Wednesday?